Hello and welcome to tonight's matchup. We have Scythe Storm Dragoons versus Chogal's Angels. I am Bloody Drapes and with me I have Krizo. How are you tonight, Krizo? Doing great, doing great. Excited to be here. This should be a lot of fun. Both these teams very good. This is an A East matchup, so these guys are pretty much at the top of the pinnacle. And uh, I, I like doing these matches because I like to, well, learn stuff and try to pick stuff up and take them to my team. Uh, what, uh, have you seen any of these teams in action before, Krizo, or are these new for you? Um, I have seen Chogal's Angels play uh, quite a few times. I scrimmed against them last season or the season before and they absolutely hurt my feelings. So okay. I'm excited to see them uh, in action tonight. All right, and tonight for match bands. Uh, on the side of Psy Storm Dragoons, we have Braxis Holdout and Sky Temple Band. On the side of Chogal's Angels, we have Tomb of the Spider Queen and Battlefield of Eternity. And we will be going to Towers of Doom. Why don't you tell the folks a little bit about the map Towers of Doom, what you got to do, what the objective is. Towers of Doom, uh, a really great map. Uh, uh, Good rotations from uh, the offlane is always wanted on this map. Uh, grabbing the objectives uh, so your towers fire off to the opponent's uh, core. Um, there's always going to be some really great team fights here. So I'm excited. Yeah, it should be really good. And we are going into the draft now. Let's check it out. Right away, we have a Medivh ban, so whenever I see a Medivh ban, right off the bat, it's definitely targeted. Uh, then we're going into a Brightwing ban. Uh, Brightwing, pretty much general, you don't want to mess with on this map. What do you think they're going to pull out here? Uh, I mean, there are certain metas. There are a lot of, a lot of metas. Um, I see a lot of stitches on this map. Um, a lot of Falstead, Junkrat. <laughs> yep, you just call uh, Junkrat. Junkrat's yep. getting the ban here. Uh, now, uh, Sylvanas is another really good one. I know for 
well, I, so I know the off laner for Chogal's Angel. She is actually my coach. So there is something I expect to be banned out here that she likes to play on this map. I can't bring it up, but... Oh, I'm man, I Johanna it up ban. Now. Nice Johanna ban. Uh, Johanna good on this map. I usually see, like like you said, Stitches and Garrosh a lot. Yeah, Stitches for sure. There's that Sylvanas. Yeah, first pick Sylv. Sylv very critical on this map. Able to shut down the structures and get it started. Really good for the uh, pumpkin camps too. Yeah. So what are we gonna get out of the first two picks for Size Storm? Ooh, oh yes. That's a good matchup between the two of them. That allows Murden to jump in and get eaten out. And a good light bomb target if they decide to go that route. Yeah. Are they going to try to counter this or just do their own thing here? That's the one thing that's really good about Heroes of the Storm is you do have a choice. You can counter whatever they pick or you can just keep doing your own thing. And that's what I figured was coming out. Ma Murky from Track 6 is what I expected. She brought it out early so it couldn't be banned out. Uh, I think she's like the number two or three uh, NA Murky player in the world. Yeah, Trax's Murky is pretty disgusting. I do not like playing against it at all. Uh, Tyrande on this. Uh, interesting pick. I I'm not a fan of Tyrande as a healer. How about you? I mean... Um, as a healer main, I, I don't like her, but in the right hands, she she's a force to be reckoned with for sure. Um, I'm curious to see what they're going to pair with it. I mean, we are dealing up into Div A, so who knows? They they may be able to be just fine with a single healer with a Tyrande, but I know I've always had trouble. Well, my team's have always had trouble just going single healer, like healer Tyrande. We get the Varian and Zeratul band out. Yeah, so it seems like, uh, I, in my mind, I, the, the bands for Cho'Gal's Angels seem very specific. Um, yeah, other than the uh, Junkrat ban, which I think is a, a pretty wise ban on this and many other maps, um, they do seem pretty targeted. Um, and then we see the Kerrigan and Genji pick up for the side of Psystorm. Yeah, very... I don't know that I would have pulled both of those out at the same time just because now you can almost pick some poke and they decide to go with my Evan Diablo, which is going to be really hard into Psystorm Dragons. Or, I mean, that's going to be an easy engage. Yeah, this is it's going to be an interesting matchup for sure. You have Genji who could potentially uh, bully the backline a little bit against uh, the Sylvanas and Tehran. Um, then you get a Zagara who's gonna just push the lane like crazy. But Zagara's not great about double soaking, so are we gonna have a 1 1 3 versus um, a 1 4? I, I guess we'll find out shortly. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if they go 1 1 3 until 10 where you can go Nidus and then it's faster. You know, it's. This could be an interesting game. They could potentially put Kerrigan in the offlane as well. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to go to our video quick. Con. Oh, a swap. Oh, oh no, but a swap followed by a light bomb. Here. Four man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh no. Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five-man light bomb. They're gonna follow up, and they're gonna get one, two, three kills. And it's gonna be everybody dying. Oh my God! When does this happen? Everybody's dead. And we are live and ready to go. Over on the side of Cystorm Dragoons, we have Chaos Pigeon, Grumble. Oh, I'm sorry, Chaos Pigeon on Muradin, Bramble on Zagara, Sunpei on Anduin. Crispy on Five, Kerrigan and four, gambling three, on Genji. Crystal, what do we have over for Cho'Gal's Angels? For Cho'Gal's Angels, we have Traxix on Murky, Toasty Buns on Tehran, Durka Dirk on that Diablo, Smart Killer on Maev, and Balrog on Sylvanas. 
so right off the bat, and I'm seeing in chat someone saying they're going to use the Kerrigan to go against the Murky. So that could be a good matchup right away. And if we're looking, they're both set up waiting for the Murky to come out between Crispy and Gambling. Looking to take down the, the Traxxas right away. Yeah, they're looking to bully her for sure, which could uh, potentially be a problem. But if you send too many men to, to kill a Murky, uh, you could lose out on a lot of soak yourself. And the very important thing on this map is you do not want to give the other team the advantage in the bottom lane and taking that tower out. That can end a game very quickly. Big damage into Diablo. Diablo backing out. He's down to a quarter. Uh, He's gonna go down to a hundred health, two hundred. Wow, able wow. to survive. He should have not survived there for sure. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> It just goes to show the amount of damage that uh, the side of Psy Storm can put out early. Yeah, it was very quick. Uh, granted, I mean, the first quarter of his life was taken by towers, but still, that that's not something you want to mess with. They have a lot of CC over there. Durker, Durker. Oh, Murden. Big damage on the Chaos Pigeon. He's already taken his jump. That's what's going to happen is the yeet. Yeah, that magical yeet. Everybody loves it. Yeah, Murky goes down once again. This could be a tough matchup for Traxxas. They, uh, I think they might have let that Murky in on purpose just to see what will happen. Yeah, I think she's going to get bullied pretty hard. No, it will be Kerrigan, but the thing is, I don't know that if Murky can get on a rhythm, I don't know that the Oh, Chaos Pigeon goes down. Oh, yeah, first death. Dirk and Dirk sitting in there really low willing to stay that's trust in your healer right there that's a lot of trust in your healer considering who the healer is yes but yeah with a Toronto and gambling going right after Traxxas again oh big damage from Balrog coming in on the crispy they get out pretty quickly Now we're up with the first tower phase uh, in 15 seconds. We'll see uh, how they play this out. Crispy's waiting to see if she can get the murky pulled off quick. Looks like four man's gonna go down to the bottom and fight. Durka Durka really low, takes a big stun, getting low, and goes down to the Genji. And they're free to, to bully the rest. It is the disadvantage of having a murky. It feels like uh, very easy to kill and not going to be able to keep in the matches. But yeah, you spend a lot of the early game uh, without a, a fifth rotating down. But the good thing with Trax's murky is she stays on that soak, so they uh, they have to keep that Kerrigan up there as well. Right, which is a good portion of their damage, so it's going to be tough for them. Um, I mean, they do have the range from Zagara, but if you can catch Gar Zagara in the wrong spot, she dies quick. Murky goes down once again. Chogal's Angels not afraid to stand in and take turret shots. They are not at all. And Toast goes down. Smork getting low. Balrog low. Oh, wow. Nice kill. But... Lose gambling. Yeah, they're gonna get the kill on. To the... Lose Balrog. So I mean, it's, it's just still... a bloodbath. It's really close though. Eight to seven, four to two in kills. Let's check out that experience. Uh, siege damage. So, yeah, they're. They're really close in experience, even though Murky's been dying a lot. You see both teams going for their pumpkin camps, completely normal. You want to get those as often as possible, I feel. Yeah, that way you can try to get that bottom pushing in. Diablo's doing really well of keeping that creep cleared from Zagara as well. Yeah, almost exclusively. I'll, the only thing she's got is on her side, that left side. Durka Durka going in against Chaos Pigeon. 
Nice throw. Did you see that setup by the murky with the... That was insane. That was crazy. That was perfectly timed. Anduin goes down pretty quickly. Murky goes down, but it doesn't really matter. Gambling's in trouble. We goes lose down. gambling. Oh. Smork is in trouble. We might have given run. out. Yeah. We do lose Meriden as well. And that Diablo is just wreaking havoc. Crispy getting the kill. Wow. A three man kill, and Murky is free to just do Murky things now. We have tens online over the side of Chogol. Uh, for Murky, we have Octagrab. Tarande has Starfall. Mind control for Sylvanas. Uh, containment disc for Mayav and Apocalypse on Diablo. What do we have for ultimates on the side of Sysorm Dragoons? Uh, Meriden took his avatar. Zagara did go devouring Maul. Interesting. We have the Light Bomb from Anduin as expected, X Strike from Genji, and summon Ultralisk out of that Kerrigan. Looks like, uh, Quite a bit of CC on the side of the, the Dragoons. Yeah, and I feel like CC wins games. You're going to have that Murky with Octograb, which could be big. I mean, there's still a lot of CC on the side of Chogol's Angels, too. Big damage on the Durka, 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 Durka backing up. Toasty goes down. And the That's CC what I was train afraid is of. rolling. Balrog in trouble trying to get out. They're just free to... uh bully that back line ultimate comes out onto the anduin yeah they're in trouble they're really low on health so we've had two big fights so far one going each way yeah this is still anybody's game tower of comebacks you know oh for sure i mean they're both really close We're gonna lose that murky again. Both teams, well. So we did have a, a camp seal on the side of Chogal Angels. They're taking their camp now and getting ready for this next altar. Murky coming down. We will have a good five man fight here. We do have light bomb up again. There it goes. Oh. oh nothing on it. They, wasted. They were, they were expecting somebody in that bush. Crispy coming really close in. We lose Murky, we lose Sylvanas. Rodney77x, thank you for the follow. Vix Machina, thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. Big kill from the Maya. But Maya gets taken out by Kerrigan. Kerrigan's Crispy's just coming in and cleaning up. Yeah, but Crispy, yeah. That's going to be the issue. I think there's going to be too much damage coming out of the Kerrigan in those five-man fights. I think that fight did allow some pumpkins to do damage to that bottom tower on the side of uh, the Dragoons. Oh, half. Kerrigoon's going to try to match up the Murky again. Yeah, she can one-shot that, his puffer fish. Yeah, I think... This is going to get harder and harder to lane against for track 6 with that Murky. But you never want to count out a late game Murky. Right. Oh, and the Murky gets the kill with help from Sylvanas. Big damage going down into Bramble. Bramble's able to get out off of the... the uh, yeah, I always forget the CC from... Light Bomb. And Durka Durka may go down. Down to 400. Durka goes down as well. The fight wow. seem uh, to be getting a little more one-sided on the side of Sysorm Dragoons. That's how it feels, but look at that kill count. We're still fairly even on both sides. Yeah. Camps. This is where it's going to get tough for Kerrigan is Murky's insta-camps. Can't be taken by Size Storm Dragoons. 
wonder if they're gonna come over here for a, a camp steal attempt. No, they're not. Looks like Chogal's Angels were thinking the same thing. Mind control goes out and misses. Oh, that's always tough when that happens. There's that devouring mouth catching Maev and Diablo. Into the light bomb, into the stun. It's just going to be rotor, or rotating CC now. Durka Durka may get out. He took a lot of damage in the process. Able to get out though. Crispy in the back by himself against Murky and Balrog. We got an Octograph here, but it's not going to matter. Berrigan uses that Chrysalis to uh, save herself. I mean, it's just such a, it's surprising how close this game is right now. Psystorm has about half a level uh, in experience on Cho'Gall's Angels. And that is expected because, I mean, the, the Murky is just having a really rough time. There's that combo again. They're just pushing that Tyrande out of fights. But the Starfall can make it really big on their side. You missed Maw. Big damage going on to Chaos Pigeon. Chaos Pigeon able to stun and get out. The CC, the CC for Psy Storm Dragoons is, is a big advantage. Yeah, they are definitely bullying that Tehran in the back line with that. Durka Durka stun onto Bramble. Bramble getting low. Bramble down to a... Oh, and Bramble goes down. Just in time for this to come up. Objective comes up in the bottom. Mind control misses. Oh, big shot from Durka Durka into Chaos Pigeon. Chaos Pigeon down. Good heals by the end of it. And now the advantage goes to uh, Chogal's Angels in the, in the turret count. Objective count. And they're gonna take this bottom port pretty easily. I just don't know if they'll be able to hold it against Psystorm Dragoons. Because this is a packed area. I don't know. And if the CC train from Psystorm Dragoons counts on a packed area. It does, but you fight under that tower, and that tower can help quite a bit in these team fights. Chaos Pigeon looking to come in. Oh, mind control oh. comes out. Huge mind control. Big APOC. What a Mom big turnaround out. there between. We got the Genji that goes down and the Zagara off that APOC setup. Crispy into the Chrysalis. Oh, big throw. Looking for the kill on Smart Killer. What a turnaround by Cho'Gall's Angels. Here I thought that go. was going. Is Meridian going to get out? I'm not so sure. I don't know. He might be looking for that last second lead. Nope, Anduin's leaving him. He doesn't have a tower to run back to. Yeah, he does go down. Oh, you hate to see the stagger there. So this will be easily going over to the side of Cho'Gall's Angels on this one. And they do get that extra shot fired for holding that bottom fort. Yeah, they're going to get three off of that, plus the extra shot, because they'll be able to push that in. Then we have Pumpkins coming down the lane as well. Yeah, that's huge. He's just got to clear that lane quick. Well, I mean, there's somebody there. They may be able to stop them. Yeah, they're going oh, yeah, to stop the Pumpkins, but they're still going to lose the objective there. I mean, the good thing going for Psystorm Dragoons is they do have a Zagara, so she can slowly poke that bottom tower. Heroes Izo says non-Murky heroes dying means Murky is winning. Am I right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Genji. Oh, and I missed it. I was looking over. I'm sorry. I was looking over. 
three-man maw coming out just as a last-ditch effort to try to uh, save the damage on that middle fort. And they almost take Bramble out with them. Oh, uh, looks like Murky's really starting to take the advantage here now on the top. Yep, as he should. Oh, we have a flank coming around. Oh, are they going to get the kill here? Durga Durga takes a stun. That Empire Starfall. Goes down. That Starfall is huge. I didn't think about how huge that is because they have to stand in it for the fight. It's a good follow-up for, for the CC that they have with the APOC. It seems like she's just dropping that Starfall wherever she sees Light Bomb. It, it's kind of uh, countering that Light Bomb combo because they There's don't want to the save There's the 6 cap. So they'll get one, maybe two shots. Oh, they're leaving their fort. They got it back. Cool. But with this fight here, Big Mind Control comes out. Stun on the... Chaos Pigeon may go down here. Chaos Pigeon down to a quarter. Goes down. So does the Kerrigan. Durka Durka goes down, but it doesn't matter. I think they had 100 That's souls. That's a team wipe. And they're going to get two here. This is game. Wow. That was a quick turn. That was insane. That uh, Murky just put on so much pressure in the lanes. Yeah. Uh, that was... That was really good job on the on that side. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, so uh, good job. Uh, game one going over to Chogal's Angels. Let's take a look at post match. I'm gonna give the talent so everybody can see them. Murda not picking this twenty talent, but plenty of talents over here. I'll go to the stats. Um, let's look at the most important ones. Damage, uh, pretty much a tie between Sylvanas and Zagara. 61,600 to Sylvanas, 61,300 to Zagara. My F coming in at 52,000, but that's expected into a big melee combo like that. Genji coming in at 40,000, and the Tyrande coming in at 40,000, and the Tyrande out heals the Anduin, 62,000 to 53,000. I was not expecting that. That's... That must be a really good Tarande. What do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the healing numbers that she put out for sure. Then we look at the experience. Murky, 29,294 to Kerrigan's 19,981. That was, uh, that Murky caused issues. Even though they were dying, that was fantastic. Yeah, look at the siege damage as well that uh, Murky put out. He was definitely, or she was definitely, um, allowed to, to do a little too much, I feel. 129,000 to 100,000. Kerrigan not known for siege damage, so I felt like it should go to Murky uh, outside of the kills, but uh, if I'm Psystar Dragoons, I don't know that I'd let Murky go for another map, because uh, I don't think they had the answer, even though they thought they did. Yeah... I don't know what I would do there if I was the Dragoons. So I'm going to take you to map picks and bands while we're waiting for the next game to come up. Looks like they're pretty much ready to go into it already. And the next lobby is up. Let me get your stats all updated. So, game number one, going over to Chogal's Angels. And uh, with the setup, very unexpected to me, I thought for sure that they had the good answer to Murky and just didn't. So, we'll be right back with game number two.
All right, so we're going into game number two. Once again, I am Bloody Drapes. Thank you for coming in and watching this Div A matchup between Psy Storm Dragoons and Chogal's Angels. And with me is Crizzo. And Super we, happy to be here. Yeah, uh, game number one. If that tells us anything, we are in for an awesome game number two. Game number one. Uh, we went to Towers of Doom, picked by Psystorm Dragoons. Chogal's Angels able to knock off the first match, and they are ready to go into match number two, Garden of Terror. Tell me about this map. What's the objective? How do we get through this? Garden of Terror, it's a pretty large map. Um, gathering those seeds so your little garden man can run around and wreak havoc on towers of your enemy. Um... A lot of uh, team fighting on this map as well um, over those objectives. Um, the map is super large, so keeping that macro in control is really important as well. Yeah, and that's going to be tough because as we saw in game one, if they don't ban this Murky out, this is a big map for Murky to just roam and do her thing. So this could be dangerous. I wonder if we're going to get the ban. Do you think we'll see the ban here on that? Or do you think they're just going to play their game and uh, keep moving? I don't know. I do not know. That's It's going to be interesting to see what we see banned out here. But Junkrat, pretty normal ban yet again. I'm coming out for the side of Chogal's Angels. Yeah, um, it's, well, we're seeing the same bans right off the bat with another Brightwing ban. So I'm guessing Toasty must be good on Brightwing to get rid of it. We got a Hogger ban this time. I like Hogger on this map. Um, he's good at solo taking objective. He's good at pushing. He's good at team fighting. Just an all around bully. Yeah, and it seems like, uh, I mean, at the lower elo where I'm at, they don't play a whole lot of Hogger. Uh, but the higher elo, I, I tend to either see it banned or picked almost always. Um, where in the lower elo where I'm at, it's a Dahaka that's either picked or banned. We are going to get the Deathwing ban. Um, Trax, uh, I think she's still one of the top Deathwing players in North America now. Last time I checked, I think she was four or five. So Yeah, she plays a really nasty Deathwing for sure. An unconventional game. Deathwing. Yes. And we see the Dahaka coming out. A good lane presence and a good global there. With an early pickup of Dahaka, I wonder if we're going to see... A Sonya ban since Dahaka gets just absolutely massacred by Sonya. We get Falstead as well. That's double global on the side of uh, the Dragoons. They should uh, be able to control these lanes fairly well. So what do we have left available for globals with Deathwing and Brightwing gone? Uh, you can stage dive with ETC and make that global. You could... Abathur, which is technically a global. I think we see the right. Anduin and Sylvanas picked up. Are we going to see the, the Johanna Anduin light bomb combo here? I think we will. Into a mind control with that, too. That can be a nasty single target combo. There's that Blaze ban. He was another one I would consider running on this map. In the off lane or as tank? Off lane. Yeah. Blaze is a tank? What? Hey, uh, you know, I've seen it both ways. Well, there's really no other, I mean, unless they want to ban the ETC to keep them from having three total globals. Nope, they're gonna get rid of the garage. I wonder if we see a counter to that Joe as in grabbing a Varian. Yeah, Shieldbreaker Varian can bully a Joe. However, with the amount of CC, with the Anduin Root, Sylvanas, uh, potential mind control, that could be a little dangerous. Yeah, I don't know if you want to take that into there. We're going to Tyrael and a Kerosene. I love it. It seems like this team likes a lot of melee. Uh, last game, almost all melee. So far, we just have Bramble playing their one ranged. 
What are the final two picks coming out of Cho'Gall's Angels here? I think we might see a Sonya on the tracks. I would think we're going to see a Sonya because Sonya yeah. is such a hard counter. Yeah. Oh, getting a Ghoul Dan to Ghoul Dan horrify into a light bulb. That's a big combo. Uh, it can also be messed up really easily. We're seeing uh, gambling on the Tracer, which I guess the Tracer's to counter the Ghoul Dan a little bit because the Ghoul Dan needs to stand still a little bit. But we will see in just a minute. We're going to go to a quick video and into our game. We will be right back. Con. Oh, a swap. Oh, oh no, but a swap followed by a light bulb. Here. Four man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh no. Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five man light bomb. They're going to follow up and they're going to get one, two, three kills. And it's going to be everybody dying. Oh my god, when does this happen? Everybody's dead. And we are into game number two. Over for the side of Sidestorm Dragoons, we have Chaos Pigeon Ontario, Bramble on Falstead, Senpai and Karazim, Crispy on Dahaka, and Gambling on Tracer. What do we have for Chogal's Angels? On the Angels, we have Toasty Buns on the Anduin, Durka Dirk on... Who is that? Joe. <laughs> that skin threw me off. We have Smart Killer on the Gul'dan, Traxxix on Sonya, and Balrog on Sylvanas. Alright, looks like we're going to have both teams going up the middle. Sometimes we do see that Sylvanas cheese, but we're not going to see that here. Yeah, they've opted against the, the, the push cheese both of these matches. Oh, that's right, they did take some of that first game. Tom goes out and misses. So Sonya will have the advantage against Ahaka as far as 1v1. Um, but as far as global, we're going to have a big advantage for the Dahaka. Now that I'm looking at it, everybody on the side of Psystorm Dragoons is very mobile. Yeah, Tyrael Tracer can be pretty nasty um, together, for sure. That's going to pretty much nullify the the Wombo combo out of the side of Cho'Gall's Angels, it, it would seem. Uh, if they're fast enough, but you also have the Horrify to worry about. That's true. First camp going over to Cho'Gall's Angels. Nothing I hate more than a good tracer. Checking out that top matchup, and as expected, Crispy really taking it hard by Traxxas. Might get a kill here. Nope. Trax is gonna back off. But well, we are gonna see Gold Dan get taken out oh. by Tracer and Karazim in the bottom lane. I am sorry I missed that kill for the folks watching. I was checking out that top lane and missed it. Gotta give the bruiser some love. I mean, I'm an offlaner, so I, I gotta check that out now and then. Oh, so camp's coming out all across the whole map for Chogal's Angels. And yeah, both teams working on some of their camps. We are missing a camp top on the side of the Dragoons. However, the seed is spawning um, on the Dragoon side. Do we see the Angels just give this one and keep soaking? I think they're going to give because it's on the side. That's a rough side to go into, especially early game. It is. They're putting out a, a good amount of damage, though. We oh, it tracks it. They may kill Crispy with it. Crispy able to get out. A seed for a camp. That but top uh, fort's getting hit pretty hard someone's gonna have to answer that bottom for it otherwise it's gonna be kind of for nothing yeah Looks like we're getting a going pretty answer. big trade i'm gonna 
check out the talents here. So we still do have a Furious Blow... Oh, a... Sh a um, Furious Blow Traxxas is going instead of Spin. I thought she might have gone Spin just to try to... Even out the Siege, but... So Joe goes the Angel do get that top board knocked down. Yeah, uh, so the trade was worth the it. Three minute mark. Traxix versus Tracer. That's a tough matchup for Traxix. And already, Cholgal's Angel's looking to push the middle. That is one thing I've seen out of Cholgal's Angels. They have no fear at, at taking on a tower. None at all. It does help when they have that Sylvanas sitting there to turn those towers off as well. That's right. Good positioning out of the Angels too, watching these bushes, helping their team secure that seed. I mean, this has really been um, a showing of how to play a map right at both games so far. Durga Durga taking a lot of damage. Do have the false set in the top lane solo. That's gonna help them to catch up a little bit. Smart Killer might be in trouble here. Good oh. CC coming out from Toasty Buns. My, my. Those Anduin roots can you know mess you up quite frequently. Oh he yeah. You did take the uh, the piercing light as well, which is that double stun or double root, excuse me. That could come an advantage for when they need to pick somebody off with a mind control horrify. False said still up top solo. This is where the He's double global push. Yeah, the double global is gonna really come an advantage. Both teams set it up. Durka Durka going to the left side, gonna try to push and bully them off. And they're looking for a kill right off the bat. Chaos Pigeon in a lot of trouble, able to get out. It looks like they're going to be able to just freely take this one. Great positioning on the side of Cho'Gall's Angels. Yeah, they're doing fantastic this match. Top wall gone and up for Cho'Gall's Angels. Falstead able to get out. That's going to be tough for Traxxas uh, if they decide to not keep the Haka in that top lane. Falstead and Tracer can really bully Traxxas. Looks like we're going to have a camp invade here. Side storm well, Sylvanas free pushing bottom. Yeah, so it's almost it is worth it. I don't know if it's going to be worth the let two go in there. Yeah, that's a that's a tough call. Sending Gul'dan to the bottom to help against Dahaka. Dahaka may be in trouble here. Both teams with 10. Camp does go over to Psystorm Dragoons. I'm going to show those talents. For the side of Psystorm Dragoons, we have Judgment, Mighty Gust, Seven-Sided Strike, Isolation, and Sticky Bomb. What do we have over there for Cho'Gal's Angels? For Cho'Gal's Angels, we have Sonya taking that leap. We have Bless Shield out of Johanna, Horrify out of Gul'dan, Light Bomb out of Anduin, and Wailing Arrow this time out of Sylvanas. In the bottom lane, Dahaka getting feared. Gonna go down. Just about gets the get Smort Killer on the other end. Bramble may be in trouble here. Big Gust with Tyrael's uh, Judgment coming out. And Toasty's gonna go down. But two for one happening there. Yeah, they, it it seems like so in the first game we we thought the team fights were pretty much a little more one sided to Psy Storm Dragoons and it looks a little more the other way on this map here. But it's still early. All right, so both teams are gonna fight over this next one to see who's gonna get objective. Smork taking some damage by Senpei. And it looks like they're going to opt to take camps on the side of, Storm, side of Side Storm Dragoon for now. They have six seconds left. 
This is a pretty important seed for both teams, uh, being the third. Sonya on the way down. Dahaka's able to come down whenever they want. They're going to get this a free, a they free seed. They got a free third seed. Very interesting. Yeah. Ball rock getting judgment on down to half, able to get yeeted out. You do have the dragoons in all three lanes defending. Well, the top top fort's already been taken out. Are they gonna get this bottom one? They have a fort and objective pushing on the bottom, and just a tracer down there. I think they're gonna get that bottom fort. Yeah, I think bottom is they're they're gonna get mid and bottom. Can they get this wall or more mid is what the question is. She hasn't shut the towers off yet. I think she may be waiting to shut off the, the keep. No, I think nope. they're just going to back out and play the safe. Oh, Tracer almost just got caught right there. They may just push with this in the bottom lane with this camp. That first objective did quite a bit of work. Now they're hard pushing bot as five. And shut off power with it. They still have a camp pushing. Judgment comes out on the on the senpai. Oh, big damage coming down. Taking out that Sylvanas. Seven the straight. The shield missed. Seven sided comes out, and takes Traxxas down. Yeah, that seven sided miss is huge. Cool, Dan said, I'm not going out alone. I'm taking a few of you out with me. So we Basically just created space for his tank and healer to get out. We have a three kill to one. And mind control not taken. We do have the silence from the arrow. So that's that's going to be a big difference here. I thought they might use that. Uh, but that may be the setup now because Tracer won't be able to blink out. It stops seven sided strike. Chaos Pitcher looking to invade. We do have the Angels coming back up. This could be third seed for the side of Psy Storm Dragoons. I, I don't think Chogal's Angels would uh, let this go lightly. No, I wouldn't think so either. They may choose to just poke this because they have... They're going to have top and middle lane with camps. Oh, we got Sons. judgment on that Sylvanas. And she was just deleted. That's the second time he's had judgment up and taken out that Sylvanas quickly. So they do have the advantage over on the side of Side Storm Dragoons. They do indeed. Looks like they Joe also have let it go. lane pressure in almost three or almost all three lanes as well. So these garden terrors could could do some work potentially. They're gonna need all three forts to go down in order to catch it up. Traxix in the bottom against Crispy. Take a big damage down to half health. Let's check this one. Oh, away. yeah. That was a really solid tongue from Crispy pulling her right into that hair's uh, stun. And it was enough to take down the Traxix. I think we're going to see the Dragoons take all three of the Angels forts here. I think so as well. Bramble really low on health. This is where the advantage of having the globals really came in. That, I mean, you basically can consider Tracer a global as fast as she can move. Somehow Middle Fort uh, survived for now. Yeah, someone's going to come. I think Senpei is coming to sneeze on that right now. Yeah, 194 health. There we go. And we're tied up on structure now. And earlier in the game, I said kills looks like it's going to go over to Chogal's Angels, and I misspoke. It's 7-3 in kills now, over on the side of, of Psystorm. 
Yeah, and they're just getting those picks with that judgment, um, which is hurting the Angels pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know that the, the Sylvanas is going to be able to go uh, off on her own anymore. Looks like we're getting a push in the bottom lane. Seven sided comes out, doesn't get anybody. Did quite a bit of work on Johanna's health, though. Yeah, but that's an easy heal up for Joe. And they are just melting this camp. Not a whole lot of value gotten out of it. Uh, yeah, but the only thing they can do is they're going to be able to push that lane out. Trax looks in against Crispy. Oh, Crispy doesn't know he's in there against the whole team coming. Senpei coming to answer. Judgment Dan takes out. the judgment. The fear comes out. That leap, was a white huge bomb. leap. Wow. And I saw the gust come out. That was insane. What a leap. That really... Uh, she said judgment. What? <laughs> <laughs> and now they're just going to go straight for top structure. As they should, just push it down. You have three dead. Gust is down. Yeah, and they gotta go answer mid with that fort. Like, it's either give up both or give up one. Sylvanas is just shutting it off. This is a keep for the side of Cho'Gall's Angels. Very good job on their, on their part. 20s come out as well. So, for Cho'Gall's Angels, what do we have for 20s? 420s on the side of Cho'Gall's Angels. We have Sonya taking Ignore Pain. We have the upgraded Bless Shield out of Johanna. Uh, we have the Haunt, the upgraded Horrify out of Gul'dan. Upgraded Light Bomb from Anduin. And Bolt of the Storm, the Teleport out of Sylvanas. Cho'Gall's Angels are able to take that uncontested. We have 20s on for uh, Psy Storm Dragoons as well. We have Angel of Justice, Wind Tunnel. Fist of Legend, uh, Cam <coughs> Contagion, sorry, and Get Stuffed. Another camp invade for the site of Storm Dragoons. Joe able to get in there. Seven-sided strike comes out. Huge fear, though. Wow, that was a turnaround. And there's that Forever Gust. Group Silence. Smart killer in trouble here. Getting surrounded gets killed. So they do get a two for one. And the camp. Three for one. That forever gust really hurt him. Yeah. You can't fight against those walls. Well, we do have still the advantage on the side of Cho'Gall's Angels as far as keeps. But kill-wise, 10 to 7. This is still anybody's game. Yeah, the pressure's pretty even too, I'm surprised. Crispy and Senpei taking top camp. Looks like... Traxix and Balrog are just going to wait for their teammates. As they should. It is way too dangerous to go out past that gate right now. Yes, for sure. Another seed is about to sprout. This seed may go over to the side of uh, Sidestorm Dragoons. I don't know if they're going to get there in time. <laughs> yeah, oh. if I was the Angels, I would probably just give this one, clean up the lanes a bit. And that's what they're opting to do. Crispy and in there a little too far. They are opting to take camps and just keep pushing. Gathering that seed. This is, I mean, this has just been a really even game. Chaos Pigeon and Senpei going in on Durka Durka. They're matched Bless by the entire team. 
huge oh, gust. forever gust into judgment. That really hurts. Yeah, I don't know that there's an answer for that. And we're gonna get a keep taken. Looks like Sidestorm Dragoons is gonna get this keep. This is potentially keep a third seed if Falstead really wanted to fly back. Big Wind silence. Out. With the light bomb and the leap misses. Tyrael does go down. They are able to even it up, so let's see if they're going to keep fighting here. Nope, they're going to choose to go for that. I can't allow that seed to be taken. And it's a, a race to seed. Falstead is flying in. And we do have all of the ultimates on the side of Sidestorm Dragoon still up, why we have none except for Blessed Shield. Dirk there it goes. Up. Forever Ghost once again. And Anduin just being bullied. Not much you can do when your team just gets stuck. Senpei may go down and kick it. Oh, so it's even. Both tanks, or both healers go down. This is becoming a bloodbath. Traxix does have leap. Misses the leap! Oh. It's like she just went up and down in the air. It didn't move. It was all calculated. <laughs> it, was just, it was just for funsies. Right. I, that's what I always do, is I just try to blow my leap for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> and Tracer trying to stay in here, but against the Joe, that could be dangerous. Here comes Smart Killer. This Tracer's becoming a problem. Gotta hate that little murky, or that little uh, mosquito. Big we kill, do lose judgment Johanna. again. We're gonna lose. Yeah, Smart was no Dan as well. Away. So that will be the next seed over for Sidestorm Dragoons. This could be huge. If they can get this, they'll still have 20 seconds with two down. Probably 15 seconds once the uh, objective hits the wall. The lanes are pushed out pretty far on the side of Cho'Gall's Angels. They'll probably take that bottom. I imagine that's what they're going for. Yeah, they're going to go for the bottom. Yeah, I think that bottom key probably falls regardless. They might be able to defend. I, I don't see it happening with a big enough push, though. Yeah, I don't know that I... Unless I saw Judgment come out, I don't think I'd want to go in there. And unless they get that thing cleared fast, this this could be game. Nope. The Dragoons are backing off. They're gonna lose mid keep here at least. Top can't keep, they may be able to keep. No, all five are up, it's possible. They are destroying mid pretty fast. Yep. I think the Dragoons should have just picked a lane and, and pushed hard. Yeah, I, I almost wonder if they should have just all gone top and pushed and let that mid collapse. Big go Oh, the gust saved Oh, them. the silence, the leap. Oh, that gust just saved Cho'Gall's angels. We got two kills so far, and they are chasing. Tracks if just you're Cho'Gall's angels, I think you just run. You... Finish clearing that, just run and uh, core. I think they're just going core right now. Yep, they're all making the top attempt. They're going to kill Chaos Pigeon first. As they should. And now wow. you just go finish the game. So we now have a race. Can Dahaka and Falstead put up a race? I don't think they can. Blue team's Savannah's doing her damage. Everybody's there. This is gonna Whoa, be. Oh, look at the side. Oh bolt. wow! It's so close. It's a race to the finish. Who's gonna get it first? Wow! And Angels take the game. Holy cow! What a race!
That was fantastic. That was a, a beautiful finish. Great job to both of these teams. Yeah, very good job. I did not expect the race right there. That, that was a good turnaround. All right. And we're going to head into a different lobby real quick so that we're able to get our interview. If you want to just stay with us for the interview for just a moment. Yes, sir. Uh, and we'll go into lobby two. And we are just waiting for somebody from Chogal's Angels to come in. I think while we do that, we will show the maps picked for these games and your winners as I finish catching these up. Hello. Hey, Hello. we have Traxxas with us from Chogal's Angels. What a great set of games. And Toasty. Don't forget about Toasty. Oh, Toasty. Hello. Sorry, I didn't see you, Toasty. <laughs> it's all good. Hi. How are you guys doing? Guys. Good, good. Very, very intense few seconds to last of the game. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> so let's start with game one. Uh, mm -hmm. Going into Towers of Doom. Uh, I knew you were going to go murky because I know you love murky on that map. So I shut up and didn't say a word. <laughs> And then I saw it come through, and then I saw them immediately with the Genji and the and the Kerrigan. Were you worried at that point, Traxxas? No, I knew my life was going to be absolute pain until I got a fast bubble, which it was. The Kerrigan was just absolutely denying me soak. But once I had seven, it wasn't a problem anymore. So um, going into that game, did you did you get what you were looking for in draft? Did you have to? I, I seen both games. It seemed like both of your bands were very purposeful so uh i did you get what you were looking for going into that or were there bands right on i mean i think that we i mean we didn't get everything we wanted every game i think toast you'll agree but we we kind of based our draft around what they were picking and what they were banning and i didn't get deathwing so no i didn't get what i wanted <laughs> get right wing both games yeah but exactly. okay. we, it, it makes for a little bit of variety in the, in the comps that's fun so i have to ask the tarande um just something that you you guys use a lot because uh we were both in draft and grant granted we're both from lower elos but um you know, Tarande and our ELO is usually a really hard time to keep up kind of healer. And uh, just phenomenal job on that. So were you excited when they left the Tarande open for you? Uh, she's not one of my mains. Um, so they had banned Brightwing, I think Rhaegar, and they had picked Anduin. So that was like the three healers that I play more often. And we knew also that they play Tarande. I don't know. It was... Uh, it was like one of the next in lines, but I did manage to keep up with the Anduin, so I was happy with that. And you, did. you didn't just keep up. You you somehow <laughs> just helped destroy their entire engage with your Starfall. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't know why people don't like Tyrande. I think she's a great healer. You just have to auto attack people, so you're cool. You get the cooldown reduction, but it was beautiful. Thank you. One other thing from that game that really popped out to me, Trax, please tell me that wasn't just on a whim and that you and Diablo practice him tossing people into your puffer fish. Because that very first, you know exactly what I'm talking about too. That very first objective when they went for the altar and you had that puffer fish perfect, I, that was amazing. So... I don't think it's not necessarily that we practice it. It's just that so Dirk, Smork, and I have played together for like years, and they're just so used to playing with Murky that we just kind of like synergize really well. So he he knows I'm gonna throw it out, and he he just he does his thing, and we work really well as, as a unit. Uh, it was it was really cool to see. That was that was something I hadn't thought about matching up, and it worked great. Um, Crizo, any any other questions or anything on game one? Yeah, so with game one, um, 
after a draft, you could see the CC train that the Dragoons were going to just run on you guys. Um, with the Genji, the Anduin, Kerrigan, Muradin. Um, what were thoughts going into that game and how to play around the amount of CC that they had? I mean, I think the, the whole thing was is we, we realized that while they had a good CC train going, they they were kind of soft because they didn't have like a, a stereotypical bruiser or a second front line. And we knew that they were going to send people middle because Kerrigan wasn't going to be able to keep up with the soak. So it was just a matter of trying to play smarter and trying to get mind controls to play around the fact that if they engaged on us, we were kind of a little bit screwed. Um, and that's mainly what it was. Is there was a lot of Kerrigan's coming down, Genji's going up, very mindful of where are they at and what are they thinking of doing right now. You guys played it really well. Thank you. I think also the Tehran division was one thing that helped mm -hmm. with that, to, to get a vision on the rotations, to not get caught out like that, know when we have the advantage. And for the CC, like, they had strong engage, so I think the fight that went best for us was when we engaged on them and just didn't let them engage. Like, when yeah. the Diablo went really aggro, that went well. I don't think there was ever a time Diablo wasn't aggro. <laughs> I agree. He was like, you yeah, know, <laughs> vendetta. That is, that is the Dirk way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and the Muradin was just getting melted off of the CC coming out of Tirande, along with Diablo. Just It just seemed like Muradin was never able to move. It was the, the Maev, too. Yeah. Actually, oh, I had a hard time landing stuns with all the... Uh, everyone was moving around with the pulls and the jumps and everything. It was hard to hit. Yeah. So going into game number two... Um, what were you what was your thoughts on this is this a map that you guys tend to like or yeah i mean we we like this map this isn't a map that we hate by any means um we we kind of said early that they have a lot of global presence so we need to make sure we're up on our macro we need to make sure that you know we are keeping up on the soak because at the end of the day they have two globals and I think that that was just the plan we went into. And I think we executed it pretty fairly well, um, making sure to, okay, Dahaka already used Burrow. Now we can be aggressive and invade onto their camp, things like that. It got really tough. I will I will throw out the, the isolation and the gust combo at the end mm -hmm. was very painful, especially for me. I could not push any buttons. But uh, but yeah, we, we kind of went into it thinking we need to try to get to 21st, which we did. It was just after the 20th. It got a little struggly. <laughs> well, they... Um, both teams had a really good wombo combo. Uh, I didn't know if you guys were going to be able to hit your wombo because they had such mobile characters. I mean, everybody on that team has some kind of speed uh, boost. So, were you worried about coming into that combo, or did you just figure you know you you had enough CC to be able to stack at some point? Or well, we knew they were going to want to run at us because their entire team was kind of a get up in your face kind of team. Um, so we were trying to save alts for when they engaged on us to try to counter engage more so. Like I was trying not to leap until after they judgmented it and to try to appeal if I could. Um, there was some counter synergy with the fears and the leaps, mm -hmm. but you know, they just really weren't allowed to move and that, that's what we're going to go with. Well, you had a huge leap onto your bruiser camp to uh, secure some kills, uh, but they ended up turning that fight around on you. Uh, I think you were the only one to come out on that one, but that was a huge leap. Yeah, we, we kind of went into it knowing that they're going to want to run at us, so let's save our buttons until they engage, and then hopefully maybe we get a good fear to pick one of them away and, and re-engage on them. So it was kind of almost the opposite of the game before. We wanted them to engage in us and us to counter-engage onto them. Right. I also had, a, I think, what, what made it... Um, so the big wombo on our side was the leap and the... Um, Light bomb, right. but then that one time on the bruiser camp, the leap came out, and then when I light bomb, they gusted. So that was that was really really good, uh, good peel for them. It was might, might have went gust. differently if the gust hadn't come out right there. Yeah, yeah it, it was a perfect gust. Um, so coming into this matchup, you guys knew you 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 just had to make it to twenty. Um, I it, I saw a lot of times when you were down, you played it real smart on objectives. Um, I, it, I thought that the game was really back and forth on, on landing the combos to to get the kills and that coming down to the end on that race, I didn't think that Falstead and Dahaka had a chance to race that fast. 
but they really pushed you guys to the limit. Were you holding on for dear life at that point? Yeah, there was a lot of me questioning our shot caller and whether or not we were going to yeah. be able to outrace. <laughs> but but he he said he was, we firm, he was firm. He was very firm that, <laughs> that they were not going to outrace us. So I trusted him, and it worked out. Like hey, car, hey, car. There was a lot of that going. On. Yeah, there was a lot of yelling. Like <laughs> I'm pretty sure he told me to shut up at one point. So I don't know. I don't know if he did, but he's like, there's a lot of chaos. Yeah, he's like, Brady, just hit the car. It's fine. Yeah. We got this. So it worked out, but that is the power of listening to your shot caller. Uh -huh. If it didn't work out, it would have been his fault, but it did work out because we all listened. <laughs> Chris, oh, any questions on game number two? I do have one question. Um, with the amount of CC that was coming out of the Dragoons with the the judgment, the, the tongues, the seven-sided, uh, the gust, um, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of Blessed Shield out of Johanna. Do you think you guys would have gotten any value out of uh, Falling Sword for that uh, Unstoppable? I mean, I think it would have been helpful to us, but I think that we needed the Blessed Shield for the peel, honestly. Um, because the, the Blessed Shield, if I'm not mistaken, it, it doesn't get rid of the ISO. No. And the ISO was honestly good job on the Dahaka because the ISO is what, in my opinion, at least for me, was absolutely. I, I couldn't see where my friends were. I, I feel like the gust. Them. I feel like the gust set up a lot of those ISOs, though. It it did, but I feel like if we didn't have the shield, I don't think we would have gotten the counter kills that we needed. Fair, fair. Yeah. I think Either also way, we were yeah we were counting on the pulls for that. Which sometimes yeah. were there, sometimes not. But yeah. uh, it was actually mentioned. I think they were like, "Well, we'll get two two charges of pull, so we should make it." Yeah, we we, we kind of went into it knowing that they were going to have a big heavy CC chain, and I think that if we didn't have some CC of our own, if we had gone sword, that we wouldn't have had the turnaround to secure kills once they blew their load on us. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you guys have any shout outs for tonight? Yeah, Tosi, you can go first. If you have shout outs, uh, well, shout outs to the team and shout out to uh, Balrog who did her first his first game with us today. Yes, it was uh, really happy to have him with us. That was my shout out. I don't have okay. any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, I always shout out the enemy team. That was a great set, really fun. Um, yeah. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for picking up the cast. I greatly appreciate it. Um, also, shout out to Balrog. We just added him to our roster, and he kind of just like fit in really well it feels really good and very comfortable um shout out to my husband because i always do that and then uh shout out to the other chogal empire team so chogal and the chaco factory and chogal rescue rangers shout out to them and uh that is all <laughs> all right shout well. out. you were more ready for this oh yeah I, i've got a list i'm prepared yeah <laughs> well thank you very much it was great casting your games tonight uh just fantastic games uh, we're going to let you go back to your team to celebrate, and we're going to close this out. So y'all have a good night. Yeah, you too, good job, guys. Thank GGs. You. Thank you for casting. Hey, thank you. It was fun to do. Well, so uh, for myself, Bloody Drapes, and Crizzo, uh, Crizzo, do you have a social you want people to go to? or? Uh... I do not. You can just uh, catch me around uh, the NGS Discord. All right. And uh, good old Division B matchups. And I will be doing uh, Division E East. So uh, it's always fun to, to do uh, at any level. And uh, it's been a good season so far. How, how's your season going so far? Uh, it, it, it's been okay. <laughs> There's a lot of season left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. So, well, um, 